Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, doctor, lawyer, turned homeschooling mom of three kids ages eight, five, and three. My eldest has ADHD and so last year I had started doing a series on ADHD tips for parents with children with ADHD. And recently I started doing a series called Parenting the Emotionally Complex Child with my friend Danielle over at Danielle Gets It Done because a lot of our kids might not have a clear diagnosis or they may have a variety of different things going on or they might have SPD or might, they might have ODD. Um, they might have nothing that has a group of letters assigned to them but they may be emotionally complex. They may respond to typical situations in a way that's different than the average kid. And that is okay. Whatever's going on, they are not what they call neurotypical. I personally believe very few of us are neurotypical, but some of us are lucky enough to have letters assigned to it so that our parents can at least Google a term to help us out the best they can. Now this week we're talking about how best to discuss your child's emotional complexity with a caregiver who is not your own. For example, a babysitter or a nanny or a teacher or a coach or a piano teacher, whoever it may be that's in a position of authority over your child that is not you. It can be really hard to navigate that relationship in a way that's respectful to both your child and to that teacher or coach as well as yourself because you're in this interesting dynamic where you don't want to present your child at the very outset as he's this special snowflake and this is what you have to do but at the same time you do want to provide the best sort of support structure for your child you don't want them to be misunderstood especially not at the outset of a new relationship for example if they're going to join the little league team or something you don't want their sometimes over emotional reactions to things to be perceived as brattiness or as um, disrespect towards that person in a authority. Now this goes back to everything I believe about the power of a label and how we as parents of children can empower that label. Whether or not your child has an official diagnosis, sometimes it can be really important to inform a person who has authority over them that my child has difficulty dealing with transitions. My child has a little bit of difficulty, you know, remembering to put his things away in his backpack at the end of a lesson. My child might need a little bit of extra help with this situation, um, whatever that situation may be. And whether or not you want to give their diagnosis to the coach or teacher, is really up to you. I strongly advocate that you do because like I said, we as their parents can empower the label. We are the only people really who can change the way the world perceives the label. Um, we know that our children who have SPD or ODD or ADHD have a lot of other things about them. A lot of other things are going on. And all of these things bring with it strengths as well. When you have a really strong-willed child, that might be incredibly difficult on the child and the parent while they're small, but that could be their greatest strength as an adult when they become the boss of other people or they become a leader in their community. So we need to best scaffold them as they grow so that they can let their best traits blossom and not let their negative ones kind of hinder them from progressing. Because sometimes if a person in authority is constantly criticizing them or belittling them or viewing them in a negative light, like this is just brattiness, this is just a spoiled kid, this is just an overly sensitive child, it can really be damaging to a child's psyche. So I like to believe the best of people, especially people who are in the business of coaching children, teaching to children, helping children. Um, regardless of what level of knowledge they're coming at it from, I do believe that most of those people love kids, want to help them the best they can, and it's up to me to educate them as to how best they can scaffold my child. Uh, so I usually, if my child is joining a new class or a team or something, I'm very frank about it at the outset, at a time when my child isn't there, usually, so that I can have a detailed conversation about the fact that he has ADHD, the fact that these are the types of things he struggles with, because as we know, one kid with ADHD is not the same as another. So I like to be very specific. These are some of the things he might have trouble with. I'd really appreciate it if you would handle it with a positive discipline route, and um, please don't perceive it as disrespect. And if you give him a second, often he will apologize himself. Or if you could just remind him 
an extra time to maybe like, you know, hurry up when he's getting ready for Taekwondo or putting on his gear because he will want to be social with the person next to him. It helps to let them know so that when these instances arise, if and when they arise, they are prepared for them. They've already had this discussion with you. It kind of clicks in their brain. Okay, I'm going to address this in a different way. I might say this in a gentler way than I would have originally. And I really appreciate that. I think that the more hidden ways we can scaffold our child in this way, the better. Because research has shown that children with ADHD and probably children with other types of neuroatypia get criticized by the adults in their life exponentially more than neurotypical children, which is only to be expected, right? They have more provoking behaviors. They have reactions that are not typical for our societal expectations. And so it can elicit a lot of negative reactions from adults. If we can gift these adults with a little bit of forewarning, a little bit of extra knowledge as to how best to help our kids grow, how best to correct some of their behaviors without diminishing their self-esteem, we are doing a great service for our kids. I usually have a discussion with my child also before he goes into new situations like new teams or new classes because I like to remind him there are going to be certain expectations of you. For example, sitting still for a long period of time or being ready on time or being able to get ready between one part of Taekwondo and another part of Taekwondo quickly. I understand that some of these things are a little bit tough for you right now, but it is something you have to master and your coach or teacher will be there to help you along and remind you if you need it. Please remember to thank them for the reminder. If they give it to you, they're on your team. It all comes back to this idea of building a team around your kid. You, of course, are your child's biggest advocate and biggest fan, but we can make the other adults in their life also be a part of their team. Um, you really wanna give people the benefit of the doubt. You wanna give people the tools to relate to your child in a positive way. And it's not fair sometimes to criticize adults when they have no idea of where your child is coming from. They don't know any of the underlying issues. And so, you know, you can kind of understand why sometimes people have negative reactions to your child's behavior. They haven't read all the books, they haven't watched all the videos, they don't love your child as much as you do, at least not yet. So let's help them out, let's help our child out, and just be honest and open about these things. Whatever is going on, whatever interesting wiring is happening inside our children's brains, we can help them develop into the very best versions of themselves. And we owe it to them to tell other adults in their lives how to do that as well. So by being open and honest, we can only help them to grow and to grow in a more comfortable and loving environment, no matter where they are, whether in our homes or out. So that's really all I have to say on that topic. Remember, we are their biggest advocates. We can empower these labels. They have nothing to be ashamed of. We have nothing to be ashamed of. And we can really all work together to build a strong community of teammates around them. Thanks so much for giving me your time, you guys. And don't forget to check out Danielle's video on a similar topic. Her child is a little bit younger than mine, so I'm sure she'll have a lot of insight for you moms who have younger children. And I wish you the very best day.